going on guys it's Jeff and today we're going to Iron Triangle Brewery in Los Angeles California I'm with my friend Justin and we are just turning into LA right now so before we get there I want to tell you a little bit about this brewery Iron Triangle was named after some of the major three founders of Los Angeles I'll post the names here also known as the Iron Triangle for their strength, their determination to really put Los Angeles on the map as a major city back in the 40s and 50s. Now the founder of Iron Triangle Brewery is Nathan Cole. Now he wasn't ever really a big beer drinker. He actually didn't discover his love for beer until about 2009 when he had his very first IPA. Since then, he's had an immense passion for it. He's got a background in sales and he decided to use his sales savvy and his newfound love for beer to start his own brewery. Now, running for about four or five years now, Iron Triangle has really put themselves on the map as one of the leading breweries in Los Angeles. I'm really excited to try this place out. Now let's have some beer. All right, guys, we made it. We're in the heart of LA at the Arts District. We just made it to Iron Triangle. I'm really excited to try these beers. Let's check them out. All right, guys, so the first beer we're gonna try today is the Iron Triangle Gold. Now, this beer was inspired by pre-prohibition styles. It's light, it's floral, smells like a flower blooming on a spring day, uh, measures in at 4.8%. So let's go ahead and try this out. Mm. This is so refreshing. All you guys out there who are afraid to venture out into solid craft beer territory, all I gotta say is this is what Bud Light should taste like. This is solid. It actually reminds me more of a lager. It's got an actual body to it, but super, super refreshing finish. This is the type of beer you wanna drink on a hot summer day. All right guys, so right now I'm gonna try the Iron Triangle Dark Ale. Now this is actually not your typical dark ale. In fact, in the description it says, it isn't a stout, it isn't a porter, or even a Schwartz beer. This is a dark ale. It's got roasty, chocolatey flavor, so let's see if it matches the profile. Cheers. So aroma wise, I'm not picking up a lot. You get a little bit of the nutty flavors. I'm definitely getting that crisp, roasty flavor. It's not heavy like a stout or a porter would be. It's more in along the lines of a brown ale. In fact, that's probably what I would call this is a brown ale. Uh, full body though, tons of flavor, absolutely delicious, clean finish, uh, really good. And, I'll tell you at 5.8%, a couple of these, you'll be feeling pretty awesome. All right, so up next we have the Iron Triangle IPA. It's 6.7%, 75 IBUs. It's their homage to the Southern California traditional IPA that everybody does. So, you know, you gotta try it. Everyone has their own take on the IPA. This is theirs. Let's see how you like it. Nice clear color, that nice amber color style. Ooh. You get a lot of the hoppiness at the beginning, the, that really hoppy, citrusy flavor. The hops are just front and center in this. It's not as strong as other IPAs you would see out there as Stone, 
Ballast Point, whoever you have as far as an IPA goes, it, it, it's more, more refined almost. You get more of those floral hoppy flavors. They make the hop the star in this one and it's really, really tasty. Is it my favorite? We'll see. But 6.7%, it doesn't taste like 6.7% at all. Very, very good. So up next, I have this beer called the Old Time Cherry Brown. Their beer, it, it's a sour, but it has notes of cherry, it has notes of burnt sugar, a little bit of oak on the finish, and this is their holiday beer. So everyone has their own holiday beer. Everyone knows Acre Steam is probably the most famous for theirs. This is their take on it, so let's see what they got. Ooh. You get this toasted sugar on the smell and on the, the front taste, almost like a, the topping of a creme brulee. And then you get these deep cherry notes on top of it, like sucking on a Rainier cherry. Not a maraschino, but a Rainier. Like a really good fresh cherry. And then you get a little bit of vanilla oaky flavors towards the end. It's a sour, but it's not overly sour. It's not pucking my face up. I'm, I don't feel like I'm gonna have to rub out my cheeks from the tartness. It's very, very tasty. Next up, we have the Big Lift Double IPA. It weighs in at a whopping 9.7% and 100 IBUs. The description says that it's super, super bitter, but the malts balance it out nicely. So I'm really excited to try this one. Cheers. It is very hoppy but it is balanced. Um, you can definitely taste the bitterness throughout the whole thing. Still lingering on my tongue even after a few seconds, um, but it's not overpowering. I don't think anybody who's afraid of maybe venturing out into the IPA realm and they're really afraid to like try a double IPA, this actually would be a good place to start. Probably wouldn't be for everybody, but the floral notes, the floral flavors, I get a lot of pine in this as well. Uh, the malt body just totally balances it out. So it's not like a punch in the face, it's like a soft pat on the back. Uh, it's a good beer. Uh, it's very strong though, it stays with you. If you're drinking this, this better be all you're drinking that night. All right guys, so next up we have Royal Clayton's ESB. ESB, for those of you who don't know, stands for Extra Special Bitter, okay? Now, Royal Clayton's was actually named after a bar right here in the Arts District that used to exist. The founder used to frequent that bar quite often. Uh, so this is his homage to it. This is supposed to be a really malty, balanced ESB. Uh, weighs in at about 5% alcohol. Uh, so it's right up my alley. That's the type of thing that I really enjoy on my day to day. If I'm gonna enjoy a good beer, let's see if this is it. Cheers. So whereas we went to one extreme to the other, this is not your double IPA. This is quite actually the opposite. This is super malty. You're getting all the flavors of all those grains all the good stuff that's in there. Um, what I would say, and if I was describing this, is I would say this is a eloquent, a sophisticated, refreshing beer. If you were going somewhere and you really wanted to show off your beer styles, and actually enjoy a beer that you enjoy, uh, this would be it right here. This is an awesome beer. So next up we have Iron Triangle's Mulholland Stash Barley Wine. It checks in at 10.5%, their heaviest beer on the, on the menu. So we're gonna check it out. Like all barley wines, it's gonna be probably heavy in alcohol, heavy in flavors. Cheers. To start right off the bat, it has a lot of caramel notes. Really good caramely texture, caramely flavor. You're getting a lot of those barley wine, like those mulled flavors, almost like a porter of fine, fine mulled wine. You're getting that with this barley wine. You're not getting the, the text, you're getting a lot of the texture though. It's velvety all across the palate. 
and you're just getting all these good caramel complex notes. A little bit of barley, the darkness gives it away. The, the good high alcohol is coming from that as well, but just the caramel texture, the caramel flavor, and the caramel palette that you texture you get on your palate is what makes this probably one of the best barley wines I've ever had. All right, so next up we have the Paperboy Pilsner. This is the only Pilsner that's on the list here at Iron Triangle Brewing. And the description is clean, crisp, and refreshing. Now, I don't know how it's gonna beat out the Iron Triangle Gold. It does measure in at a higher ABV. It's at 5.3%. Uh, same light color, same light body. I'm definitely getting that Pilsner aroma off of it. So let's try it out. Cheers. Wow. This is the cleanest, lightest thing that you're ever gonna try. That weighs out at a 5.3%. This is smooth the whole way through. It's like silk. When you're drinking it, it's like it slides right past your palate. You're picking up all the flavors on the way, but as soon as it arrives, it's gone. This can be a very dangerous beer because this is the type of beer where I could have six or seven or 10 because it's so smooth and so light. It's gone in an instant and you're ready for the next one. Good, good Pilsner. All right guys, the last beer that we're gonna try here at Iron Triangle is the Rusty Rivet Pub Ale. It's on nitro and it's 6% alcohol, which is what you can see right here, those thick, really creamy head. Now I'm gonna probably get, ooh, I'm getting a lot of passion fruit on the aroma, a lot of tropical flavors, and I can't wait to try this. Ooh. See, you can see that thick cream on the, those thick bubbles on the head right there, the oh, lacing on the glass. Yeah, look at that lacing. That's, that's nitrogen, that's nitrogen lacing for you. Not, that's not normal carbonation, folks. This is a really tasty beer. You're getting a lot of those fruit flavors, a lot of that light, creamy texture from the nitrogen, but it's not overly heavy. It's only 6%. But if you're looking for a beer that's almost like the texture of Guinness, with the taste of a great fruity ale, this is the thing you gotta try. I love it. All right guys, so, so Ryan was nice enough to take us on a quick little tour of Iron Triangle Brewery and kind of see their process here. So we're just gonna follow him around. Thanks sure. Ryan. Yeah. Cheers. And uh, let's see how their process goes. Sure. Uh, we'll start with that. Uh, we have a four vessel, 30 barrel system that we run uh, once or twice a week. Um, so the brew house is here in the back. It's a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice setup. Yeah. Um, we have a uh, mash ton, the louder is on this side, kettle and a whirlpool over here. So it's, uh, Pretty, you know, pretty nice system to work on. From what I'm told, I'm not a brewer myself, um, but uh, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty great system. What did, what did they start with when they started this brewery? Did they have this whole setup? Yeah, everything was here like wow. this from, from day one. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it was a pretty, pretty sweet, uh, pretty sweet setup. So, and then we have the, the cellar. Uh, we have a lot of cellar capacity at the moment, more than what we're using, uh, obviously as a starting out brewery. Uh, we have one uh, smaller 15 barrel bright tank. And we have uh, two 15 barrel fermentations and vessels, uh, several 30 barrel and a couple of uh, 60 barrel fermentation vessels. So we have a, a couple beers in process, various stages of the process here. How many uh, beers do you have? Um, maybe two, um, you know, we, we, um, there's been as many as three, I suppose. Sometimes it's only one, but 
I think there are two beers in, in some stage of the process right now. I believe the brewer has uh, two brew days on the calendar this week. Awesome. Uh, those things are? What's that? Uh, these are the uh, charcoal water filters. Oh. So this pulls the chlorine and then processes the water and makes yeah. it nice and clean and tasty. Yeah, I mean, LA water is pretty good. We use LA water more or less as it is. Um, part of uh, beer appellation is, you know, the water. And, yeah. You know, in history, but not just wine, but you know, also in beer, the terroir, the earth, the, the region from where the beer comes is part of the flavor, right, of the, yeah. of, of the beer. Absolutely. And so we're, you know, we're like, you know, committed to using LA water to make LA beer, uh, but chlorine and chloramine are not good for beer, obviously. You'll yeah. get some pretty funky off flavors if you have chlorine in the water. So we pull the chlorine and chloramine out. Yeah, that's pretty much what these are for. These are all your tap eggs. These are a charge wrap system for the bar here. Storage, our inventory for distribution. Woohoo! Chilly. Yeah. <laughs> 38 degrees, baby. When it's 100 degrees in here during the summer, it feels pretty nice in here. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> I set my computer up in here this summer, did a couple emails to cool down. It's too fucking hot. Oh, I believe it. But in the winter, it's uh, not as desirable. So, that's pretty much the short version. I mean, I you're, you're a brewer, so you know how yeah. it works. Usually when I'm giving a tour, I'll explain how beers are made. Well, it's always cool, though, to see everyone's setup and their process, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if you go over a friend's house, you want to see how they got their whole, like, man cave set up. Right. This is my man cave. Yeah, for sure. You know? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Um, I, you know, maybe one day I'll get into the brewing side as a home brewer. I just haven't had the... Shit, it's a lot of fun. I haven't had the equipment or the space <laughs> to do it yet, but one day... Hey, awesome. Ryan, thank you. Yeah, for pleasure. The tour. That Thanks was for coming really down awesome. Triangle. Appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate you coming down and, and trying out the beer, and hopefully you can uh, make it back soon. Absolutely. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you, Darren and Ryan, for the hospitality, and thank you, Iron Triangle, for the delicious beers. Make sure if you enjoyed this video, you like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Let's Have Some Beer.